So far, our journeys have been through the cosmos in pursuit of an understanding of space and astronomy. Today, we travel no further than home, the British Isles, for centuries a center of research and discovery. Our first stop is Armagh in Northern Ireland, the location of the Commonwealth's second oldest observatory and best known today for its planetarium and hall of astronomy. Each year is visited by some 55,000 people. Throughout the United Kingdom, there are about 10 planetariums and they range in size from small ones attached to schools to the big ones that you would find, for example, at Jodrell Bank or in London. And there's a host of other institutions whose business is that of astronomy and space. And that's what we are about today. Where to go and what to do. And where better to begin than right here in Armagh. If you're interested in meteorological pictures, and who isn't, the Hall of Astronomy has a receiving station tuned into weather satellites orbiting the world. in Pasadena, California. And there's a ham television station. Linked to international science centers, it can transmit or receive single slow scan images by shortwave. I believe these have been sent by JPL Laboratories. On an astro computer, you can try to make a lunar landing, or explore a galaxy, or learn the star patterns of the night sky. The emphasis is on do it yourself. And on sea for yourself. Here, some moon rock samples from the Apollo landings. But the focal point is the Star Theatre, a 13 meter dome beneath which an audience can be spellbound. Here, in air conditioned comfort, are reproduced 7,000 stars and all the wonders of the heavens. It's here in the Star Theatre of the Planetarium that we can turn day into night. By means of this complex projector, we can throw an image of the night sky complete with stars and planets onto the inside dome of the planetarium. Here in Armagh, we have recently developed a new technique that has allowed us to become the first planetarium in the world to be able to insert television pictures and computer graphics into the planetarium sky. Next stop, Greenwich, and to an institution set up by Charles II in 1675 to help sailors navigate his Royal Observatory. Later, its function became purely astronomical, but today it's part of the National Maritime Museum, a place of history and curiosity. This is the famous Onion Dome at the old Royal Observatory in Greenwich. It's shaped like that because the first telescope to go in the dome was actually smaller than the present instrument. When they got round to installing the 28-inch telescope back in 1893, they couldn't afford a new observatory building. So all they could do was to balloon out the dome to get the telescope inside to fit in. The telescope itself is still in use. Another dome has become the Greenwich Planetarium. And just outside, longitude zero, the prime meridian line of the world. The line itself is set into a cobbled courtyard and it's a brass strip running straight down here. And as you see, I'm crouched down with my right foot in the eastern hemisphere of the world and my left foot in the western hemisphere of the world. The line itself was set up in 1884 by international agreement and now it marks the reference for our world mapping systems. And as well as the meridian line, there's a great deal more of historical interest to see here at Greenwich. Much of it, as with the meridian, reflects the navigational past, like this proud tea clipper, the Cutisark. Stop number three, Hurstmansu, some hundred kilometers south of Greenwich, and to an ancient pile built in 1441, but with a very modern function. 
Yes, it's a genuine haunted medieval castle set in these magnificent surroundings deep in the heart of the Sussex Downs. But it's also the home of Britain's major astronomical institution, the Royal Greenwich Observatory. It moved here to Hurstmansu in 1947 after increasing street lighting and pollution made observing from London virtually impossible. Well worth a visit whether you're interested in astronomy, space, giant telescopes or simply feeding the ducks. A visitor centre describes the observatory's work. Modern astronomy isn't so much to do with peering through telescopes but to harnessing the might of the computer. Here at Hurstman Sioux is Starlink, a nationwide network of research establishments who pool astronomical data through their computers, all linked to one another by telephone line. And here's an example, a digital picture of the Horsehead Nebula, accessed via the computer of the Royal Observatory Edinburgh from its Schmidt telescope in Australia. The colours aren't real, they represent brightness levels. Here the blue indicates ionised hydrogen gas. The greens and reds show the dark interstellar dust of the horsehead itself. And then there are the Hurstmansu telescopes, like this one, which bounces laser beams off satellites to calculate continental drift and the spin of the Earth. But the biggest telescope, the 2.5 metre eyes at Newton, which used to live in that dome on the horizon over there, is no longer here. It's been moved lock, stock and mirror to form the basis of a major new international observatory on La Palma in the Canary Islands. Set high above the clouds, the new mountaintop home of the Isaac Newton frees it from the obscuring murk of the lower atmosphere, a big clean eye on the sky. And at our fourth port of call, Jodrell Bank, is to be found the equivalent ear on the sky, the great 75-metre parabolic dish that listens to the emissions of the universe, radio astronomy. Jodrell Bank is undoubtedly one of the best places to visit for an astronomical day out. There's a planetarium, a visitor centre, and even a radio telescope you can operate yourself. And then, of course, there's the big, big dish, which you can goggle at, but it's exclusively the property of the professionals. At Jodrell Bank, you can learn all about the discoveries of radio astronomy, quasars, pulsars, radio galaxies, the solar wind, and molecules that float between the stars. North of the border to Edinburgh, and an institution that spans the world, Scotland's Royal Observatory. Besides Edinburgh, it has telescopes in Hawaii and Australia and there's an excellent visitor centre. What they've done here is to take away the floors from the telescope tower, but they've retained the huge pillar and at the very top, the telescope itself. Now this instrument is worth talking about because it was designed not to be looked through like an ordinary telescope, but was built as a special camera. In fact, it's called a Schmidt telescope and was designed to give very wide angle views of the night sky. This relates very well to the rest of the exhibition here in this part of the visitor centre, which tells the story of the world's biggest astronomical camera, the United Kingdom Schmidt Telescope, which a little run from here in Edinburgh is situated in Australia. The pictures on the spiral staircase tell the story of the Schmidt Telescope. They explain how it works and what it's used for. They also tell what happens to the photographs taken there at the observatory in Australia when they're returned here to Edinburgh. In fact, they make up a superb library of some of the best astronomical photographs ever taken by man. We saw some of the Schmidt pictures in Starlog 11, truly cosmic masterpieces, and made available to astronomers everywhere. And finally, some of the spots to visit around the world. In Vancouver, Canada, a magnificent science museum planetarium complex with super star shows. South in Arizona, the great crater caused by a meteorite 20,000 years ago, well preserved and quite accessible. Florida, the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, home of the NASA launches and the Space Shuttle. Washington, D.C. The Air and Space Museum, without doubt the best spacecraft and astro info anywhere. 
Moscow and the Soviet opposite number. On display, a full-size Salyut space station and a Vostok rocket. In the Far East, there's the Hong Kong Planetarium and Space Museum, futuristic and full of imagination. Brisbane and Australia's biggest planetarium. There's a public telescope too, set in beautiful gardens. And lastly, New South Wales, location of the Anglo-Australian and UK Schmidt telescopes. But the real fun of astronomy is that it's science for everyone. There, above our heads, but not over our heads. A laboratory in the sky to explore as we please. <laughs>